So I've been working at Smithsonian for 21 years, making models for exhibits. And uh, when 3D digital work started to come along, I got a taste of it. It's pretty much all I want to do now. <laughs> The first time I used 3D technology in my work, I was very uh, pleased with the results. You can see an example of something that was created from scratch in the museum in almost any of the exhibits. It's applicable anywhere. We can go in and scan a gallery and then create um, real drawings, real dimensional drawings from that scan and would help us place the exhibit through at that gallery. I wouldn't necessarily say it's replacing. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's adding. You know, it's, an, it's another tool that enables us to do things in a way that wasn't possible before. It really does um, give you more tools in the tool bag. So it's, it, it was a really wonderful way to combine new technologies with traditional methods of making things. The amount of time it takes to make a model really varies depending on the model, the size, the, the, the detail. The workflow for 3D starts with either a laser scan, a CAT scan, or photogrammetry usually. Uh, once we have the 3D data, we can do a few things. We can machine and we can print. Um, machining is a subtractive process where you're taking away from the material to create the piece. Uh, printing is an additive process. It can be fairly touchless. We actually, one of the repatriation objects was a rattle, and it stayed in the box that had been packed in, and it was run through the scanner. So it was not touched at all. And then we were able to produce a, a, an actual touchable 3D printed object. <laughs> 3D has enabled us to display or exhibit objects that we couldn't normally uh, share. A good example is our reconstruction of Lucy. We used each each digital model of the of of her cast bones to then make mirrors of the elements that she was missing, uh, in order to try and make a more complete reconstruction, but still utilize her actual anatomy. One of the best ways we've used um, this 3D modeling most recently was in. Um, a very fragmented skull from Jamestown. Using the 3D modeling, we were able to scan each individual piece and virtually reconstruct this skull. And it was quite an amazing project and it just took it to a whole new level. I think there is still an art to working in the 3D digital space. Um, there's a lot of interpretation, but there's also building from scratch within a 3D space. You know, now that I've done a lot of manipulating of clay and plaster and fiberglass, um, now I'm finding ways to manipulate polygons, which are triangles, into uh, three-dimensional objects. People think, oh, you're not building things with your hands, but you're still using your mind, you're still using your creativity. It's nice to be able to go in and hit the delete button <laughs> when you've made a mistake or when you don't like something. The museum goers love it. I mean, they want to see things as they were in the field. They don't want to see a photograph necessarily. They want to see a physical object or representation. It's, it's becoming easier to do. Uh, there's more technology available for printing, more materials being utilized. There's competition going out there between companies and all of these costs are coming down and making it more affordable to even the average user. It's sort of like Christmas when you go into that printer and see what you've printed and, and then it was successful. 